Hello, everybody. I'm Miss Lisa. Welcome back to another episode of Watercolor for Kids. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be showing you how to paint landscapes. And we're going to talk about landscapes starting next week. This week, I want to talk about the color green. Because what is a landscape? It's what you see outside. It might be trees, it might be fields, it might be bushes. There's a lot of green. You can imagine there's a lot of green involved in landscapes. Now, when we look at our paint tray here, we have one green. And so if we paint the whole drawing that we do with one green, it's not going to be the most interesting painting because we don't have any variation in the color green. Whereas in nature, there's a lot of variation in greens. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to mix different colors of greens using one green in your paint tray. And you can see that we can get a whole bunch of different varieties of greens. And I've made some of those here. You can see that in nature, these are different leaves off of my citrus trees. You can see there's a lot of different variations in greens. There's dark greens, there's yellow greens, there's that lighter green. So I'm going to show you today how to do some leaf rubbings, and then we're going to mix some different colors of green and do a painting similar to this, where we have all the different greens that we've mixed and uh, put down on these leaves, and it makes a beautiful artwork in itself. So we're going to learn about greens today, and we're going to learn how to mix greens, and we are going to make a whole variety of greens, and then you're going to remember this, so when we start our landscape painting, you'll be able to mix up different kinds of greens for different things. Maybe you're going to put some dark greens in some of the trees, and some spring yellow green in the fields, and maybe some of your bushes are going to be regular green and maybe you're going to have a little bit of a blue green in the background. So this is what we're going to be doing with our green paints because you can see it's going to be hard to paint a whole landscape with one kind of green. So I'm going to show you how to do leaf rubbings today because leaf rubbings in themselves make a beautiful piece of artwork. And these are not the best leaves for leaf rubbings because they don't have a really uh, distinct pattern on the back of the leaf. I love using other kinds of leaves that have a very distinct pattern on the back. Like this one has a little bit of a pattern, but it's not very noticeable. Whereas if you use a plain tree leaf, or other kinds of deciduous leaves, you'll get a stronger pattern. But what we're going to do, these are the only leaves that I have at the moment because it is winter. If we waited to do this class until spring, I'd have a lot more to choose from, but I think we can still make it work. So you're going to need some leaves and go ahead and uh, find some leaves. If you have to pick them from your neighbor's tree, you might. You should probably ask them first, right? So go ahead and find some leaves. And you also will need a crayon. This is a black crayon with the wrapper removed. These are the big um, sort of kindergarten crayons. These work great for leaf rubbings. As soon as the crayons break, so here's a broken one, I save them, I always save them, take the, take the wrappers off, and now they're ready for rubbings. So to do a rubbing, what you want to do is take the back of the leaf, and the back of the leaf has to face, well it doesn't have to, but it's going to work a lot better if the back of the leaf is facing the back of your piece of paper. So here's my watercolor paper, I slip the leaf in there, and I should be able to feel my leaf through the paper. 
and I do. I can feel that the stem is here, and I can feel the outline of the leaf, so I know where I'm going to be rubbing. And to do this properly, you have to push down pretty hard. So you can see my first pass, I can find the center of my leaf. And now I want to make sure I get the whole edge, and I'm starting to see some of the edge there. So I want to work around the leaf until I get the whole edge. Now you can see I've got the top and both sides, but I need the bottom and I need the little part where it attaches to the branch, which is right there. So there's my first rubbing. And now I'm going to, I can use the same leaf again. I'm just going to take it out and face it a different direction. I'm going to feel my leaf. It's easier when you find the, the bottom where it attaches to the stem. That's a nice thick portion of the leaf. So that's the easiest thing to feel. And, and when you put the leaf under, kind of remember in your head about where it is. I know it's right there and I can feel the lumpy bit there where it attaches to the branch. So you can see there's the leaf. Now I think I'll switch to a different leaf. Let me try this one. It's a slightly different shape. It's a longer, narrower leaf. And I want to face this one a different direction. I'm trying to get some variation in my patterns. So let's put that one here. And let's put this one here. Maybe this one here. I'm feeling for there's the lumpy bit there. So these are overlapping. This one's overlapping the leaf that I've already rubbed. I want to make sure I get the top of the leaf as well as the sides and the bottom. Let me try this little one here. When you do leaf rubbings, always remember that you want the bottom of the leaf facing upwards towards your paper. And then that way you'll get a better outline of your leaf. And also you want to leave, use leaves that are pretty fresh because after a while they sort of lose their shape. I mean, not their shape, but they sort of lose their um, their ridges, and those are the parts that are really going to give you the shape of your leaf. And also when you rub the same leaf lots of times, it kind of flattens down and the same thing happens. So if, if possible, use fresh leaves. Okay, I'm just looking at my paper now. There's an empty spot here, there's an empty spot here, and one here. So I think I'll try to fill those up a little bit. I'm going to turn this leaf this direction because I've already got these two facing upwards. I'm going to have this one facing downwards. I like the variety. I'm going to do something here. I've got these two facing this way. I think I'll put this one now in this direction. And what should I do here? I think I'm going to have one coming downwards. So turn this one downwards like this. Move it over just a little bit towards the edge. Feel for it. And rub. There we go. 
Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a border on this paper. And because this is in a, in, um, a tablet, there's a perforated edge where I can rip it out of my book right there. So really, my border's got to start in here instead of up here. So it's going to start here. I'll put my dots there and there. And now I'll go ahead and connect the dots. This is just going to remind me where to keep my paint. I see that some of my crayons gone over the line, but that's okay. Okay, so now we have our rubbing. We don't need our leaves anymore. We needed leaves. We needed a kindergarten crayon. And now we're going to switch over to our watercolor. So we're going to need our paint box, some water, a paintbrush. This is my nice big paintbrush that holds a lot of paint, and some paper towels. Always good to have paper towels to dab your paintbrush on. And I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush. And I'm going to start with the green. So we can take a look at that green and see what kind of green we've got in our paint box. So I'm going to go round and round and round in the paint to resuspend it. And I'm going to use quite a bit, not a lot of wash, but more than I had. And I'm going to paint over this leaf. Let's see what it looks like. It's a, a lovely green, but if we had all of the, the leaves the same green, that wouldn't be too interesting. So we're going to mix up a yellow green now. So we're going to take some more green. Let's make this one yellow green. And then I'm going to put the paint on. And you'll see some areas where the leaves are overlapping. And that's fine. You get to choose which one you want to have in front and which one behind. So this green leaf is now in front of this leaf, and it's also in front of this leaf. Because you can see the whole leaf, and you can see that part of it's going to be cut off on this leaf, and part of it's going to be cut off on this leaf. And I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to go into the yellow. So let me rinse it pretty well because we don't want to get a lot of green in our yellow. And I'm just going to put that green, I mean the yellow, right on top of the green and let them mix. And I can use my paintbrush to kind of draw the colors together. I'm actually going to put a little bit more water in there to help the paint move. I should be able to let it mix right on the paper. Now this little one here, let's make that one a bluey green leaf. So I'm going to take some green. Some blue. I'm going to let them mix right on the paper. And you can see I'm painting right over the crayon. It's 
beautiful the way the colors mix on the paper. Now I'm going to try one that has a little bit of brown in it. It'll turn out similar to this one here. So let's take some of the green. Let's try this one down here. And remember, I don't want to paint right up to this leaf because they'll both be wet and some of this paint's going to want to go over there and some of that paint will come over here. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of white paper showing. I think we've talked about this before. And that way I won't form a bridge that will allow the colors to be mixing. I want them to mix on my leaf, but not between the leaves. So if I paint it like this, there's dry paper. So we won't have all the colors mixing in here. I'm going to pick up some brown now. I'm just going to let it mix in with the green. Now remember before we were talking about how to make a dark green. We make dark green by mixing a little bit of red into the green, right? And so we can actually do that on our paper. Let me just take some of this extra paint off of there. If you have a blob of extra paint, you can dab your paintbrush on a paper towel to dry it out. And then because the paper towel, I mean the paintbrush is drier. If you touch it to a place that has a lot of paint puddled, the brush is drier than the puddle, so it pulls the extra paint into the brush, and then you can dab it on a paper towel. So let's try the red and green. And we're going to use red paint in our green to kind of darken it, and let's try it on this leaf here. I'm going to take my green, And I'm going to make this big leaf the one in front. So now because I've painted right over the bit that overlaps this leaf, it makes this leaf look like it's behind. And if that's a little bit confusing, take a look at the uh, drawing class that I did a couple weeks ago called In Front Of and Behind. In Front and Behind. Okay, so we've got green on the paper. And we're going to go back up here and we're going to pick up some red. And if I pick up too much red, this is going to turn reddish. But I can always put a little bit more green back into it if I need to. Now let's watch what happens. As that red mixes with the green, we should see that the green is darkening. So now it's not a nice bright green, it's kind of turned into this lovely olive green. And you can think about other combinations you might want to try too. How about green and orange? Let's see what happens. Let's try this leaf here. So much of painting is like a big experiment, which makes it a lot of fun. You have to say, what happens if Seems like you always learn something. Okay, there's the green. I'm going to go into the orange now. Notice how many times I'm going round and round in the paint. I want to get that paint resuspended because if I have only a little bit of pigment, if I put just a little bit, 
of orange into this green. I'm not going to see much of an effect. And also I don't want my paintbrush to be super, super wet because then it's just going to wash all the color out and I won't have very much color at all on the paper. But at the same time, I don't want it to be too dry because then I won't allow color mixing on the paper if it's too dry. It's just going to sit where I put it. There's a lot of difference. Let me show you. There's a lot of difference in putting paint down with a dry brush. When I say dry, I don't mean completely dry. But if I put this paint down, let's do this leaf, with my brush drier. Actually, that's not dry enough. This one is now looking kind of dry. So you see how the paint only goes where I push it. And I know if I put another color on top of this, it's not going to really move too much because there's not a lot of liquid. And I won't get this nice mixing. So let's try that. Let's make a yellow. Let's make this one yellow green. If I take some yellow and I don't have much water in that yellow, so my paintbrush is still pretty dry, and then I go on to this. Do you see how it doesn't mix? It doesn't flow together like the other ones did. And you can still mix the colors, but it's a lot more difficult. I mean, it takes more effort. It won't be fast and easy and it'll be a little bit slower, which I suppose is good if you want more control over where the paint's going. Now let's see what else we can do. So we've got yellow green, we've got some blue green, we've got green, we've got, I like these sort of green and brown combinations. So I'm going to do one that's need more water, I can tell. Put the green down here. And I don't want to touch that one because I don't want them to mix between the leaves. And if it touches and they mix a bit, that's fine too. But I'm going to try to not touch them to the neck to the other leaf. I'm going to try another one, brown. And this one has a lot of brown. And I can take some of this extra paint off by drying, drying out my paintbrush on the paper towel. I'm just moving it around a little bit. There we go. Let me show you what happens if I put a little bit of black into a leaf. Of course, that's another way to darken the color. And I don't need too much black because black is so strong. You can see it really makes a difference. And I want the leaf to still look green, just a different kind of green. When you mix black with a color, it's called making a shade. So this is a shade of green now. What else should I try? Oops. I haven't done one with purple. Are you wondering what that would look like? 
Now see what I'm going to do here because this leaf is wet, I'm going to come right up to it and leave a little bit of dry paper. Otherwise, this leaf and that leaf's colors are going to get all mixed up. I'll try to keep them a little bit separate since this one has purple in it. And the other one has black. And I want to see the differences. If they get mixed up, it doesn't matter really. But I like to see the differences because that's why we're doing it this way, to get variation. Isn't that one beautiful? How did we do that one? Was that orange and green? I think it was. Let's do another one of those. Let's try it here. One thing that's really nice about watercolor is if you let these colors mix themselves on the paper, it just has a really nice feel to it. It looks natural, like something you might see in nature. Now, as you can see, in this case, I didn't paint all of the leaves down. I didn't paint them all a green. I left some of them as white because I actually like that look of the shapes of the leaves, but I mean, they look great if you paint the whole thing as well. But I think I'm going to leave some of these as white too, because it might take me a, a little bit too long to paint the whole thing. So now I was going to start painting in between the leaves. Now remember, when I start this part, that I'm not going to want to touch the edges of any of these leaves, because then I'll get mixing of the paint. And I'll show you, I just spilled some water on it. I'll show you what happens. So this is the one I did before. And you can see that right here, I touched a little bit of the red to this green leaf. And that made some of the green come out. It formed a little bridge there and the green can come out. And you know, it's still beautiful. But if you want to, I'm gonna try on this one to keep the red outside of the leaves and the green inside the leaves. And if it touches and some of it mixes, that's fine. That's what happens with watercolor, but we'll see. So I'm going to very carefully, and you'll notice I'm not using as much paint as I used when I was actually painting inside the leaves, because now I'm not going to be encouraging the colors to mix. It's just red. I don't need to mix it with anything else. So I can use my paint dryer and I just touched a little bit there, so we'll see how much of that green comes out into my red. At this point, I find it easier to turn my paper, just like when I'm making my border, it's easier if I turn my paper. Okay, so here, I come down. You'll notice that sometimes when I paint, I turn my brush too. That helps me get into tight spots. Sometimes I turn my paper. Sometimes I turn the brush. It's 
sometimes you have to make it up a little bit. Like you're not quite sure where the edges are, and that's fine. I think there's probably a little bit of red here that I have to fill in. It's okay to make it up a little bit. I'm also making lots of bridges on this one. I've got lots of places where my red and green are mixing. You'll see, but you know, it's it's kind of pretty. It's all right. Let me get all these leaves together. Now I'm not going to be able to hold this up for you when I finish because it's got green in it and what happens is it confuses um, the computer software with my green screen behind me. So I'm not going to hold it up for you. Probably another good reason not to hold it up is that the paint might run. The green is still very wet and if I hold it up I'm going to be making even more paint bridges because my red is going to be happily running into my green by that point. Now if you don't want to use red behind and you're probably wondering why I chose red, I chose red because red and green look great together because they're complementary colors. If you look at a color wheel, red is the color opposite green, and complements always look good together. But if you want to use a different color, that's fine too. I think it looks better if you use one color. It gets a little bit because you you want the um, you want the focus of this painting to be on the different kinds of greens. And if you also have orange and purple and blue and all these other colors behind the leaves. That looks good too, except you lose then the um, focus on the beautiful greens that you've mixed and everything just becomes colorful. Now there's a leaf here, so I'm going to paint around that leaf. If there's any teachers out there watching, this makes a beautiful classroom class, a classroom display for open house. I've had teachers ask for this class and then the kids paint different colors behind. So sometimes they want to paint orange, sometimes red, sometimes purple, but just use a single color and they look beautiful when you put them all up on the, on the wall together because they'll have different background colors but they'll all be tied together by the theme of green variation in the leaves. So you can see it's going to be a little bit tight through here, so I'm going to not press down too much on my paintbrush because when I press down on it, it gets wider, so I'm going to pull up on it. To get through tight spots. And then also here. I'm painting right on the tip of my brush now. Right here. Dangerous spot here because so it's a green. Let me go through here. Almost done. Yeah. I'm 
my green is really wet right there, so that's definitely going to move. There we go. If I wanted to dry some of these little spots off, they'll dry eventually. But if I wanted to take a little bit of the excess paint off of some of these places, I just touch my paintbrush to a paper towel to kind of dry it out. And then with my paintbrush drier than the place where the paint is, it's going to draw the paint into the brush. You see that? It draws it right in, and then I can dab it on the paper towel. And let me do some of this one for you, just to show you. Okay, there we go. So let's think what we learned today. I showed you how to do leaf rubbings, and this is so fun, and you can make beautiful stuff by rubbing leaves. Make sure that the back of your leaf is facing upwards towards the paper. So you should be able to feel all of the ridges on the back of your leaf, the ridges from the veins. And then we mixed all different kinds of greens and we mixed them on the paper. So we overlapped the, the rubbings so that the leaves looked like they were facing different directions. And then we had to think about where the outline of the leaf would have been. And we filled those in first with just plain green and then we put green plus another color. And if you use enough water, it allows the colors to mix. And we can mix them on the paper. And look at those beautiful colors we came up with. A really nice variety of greens. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. And next week, when we come back, I'm going to talk about painting a, um, a landscape now that we know something about how to make different kinds of green. Until then, take care. Make sure you wash your hands well, wear a mask when you go out and socially distance, practice your art inside, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.